So this slide is really meant to give you a very high level overview of our end-to-end -end process of how we make our bioengineered follicular units. So it all starts with a very simple blood draw from a patient. From the blood, we isolate out peripheral blood mononuclear cells that we then reprogram to iPSC. We're not innovating on this step. We're just leveraging industry standard protocols. Right now it's sendivirus, but mRNA techniques are looking really promising. At the end of this first step though, what we have are an unlimited and renewable source of cells to generate our product. So in step two, once we have those iPS drive cells, we differentiate the cells into two key cell types. Those cell types are the dermal papilla, like you just heard, and the epithelial stem cells, because when you combine these cells, you can spark follicular genesis. And so then once we have those two cell types, we combine and culture our cells. And we can either do this in 3D in an in vitro environment where the cells self-assemble and form little hair follicle organoids. And this is really important for us to be able to monitor and investigate the process of follicular genesis so we can optimize our cell types for their greatest potential. But what we can also do with those two cell types is bioprint them into individual follicular units that then in the fourth step, we can transplant into the patient. Right now we're transplanting into our preclinical models, but for the patient, we envision leveraging the use of robotic delivery systems for the thousands of units that people will want transplanted. And this will be performed by a cosmetic surgeon or a dermatologist. So that's our product concept and the kind of end-to-end -end process. Where the company is focused right now is on steps two and three. So I'll give a little bit more information about those steps. So our brilliant scientists derived protocols for generating our cell types. To generate our dermal papillas from induced pluripotent stem cells, we first have to go through an intermediate cell type. That's the neural crest cell. All told, the process to create dermal papilla cells takes about three weeks. And at the end of the process, we derive the dermal papilla cells and they express the genomic and proteomic markers that you would expect to see for dermal papilla. So those include alkaline phosphatase, LEF1, versicin, laminase, and vimentin. We do the same thing for our epithelial stem cells. So we have a protocol for deriving those as well. And so it starts out with an eight day differentiation process that derives immature epithelial stem cells. And so after that, we successively passage the cells in order to enrich and expand for those epithelial stem cells. And so at the end, we see expression of key markers like keratin 15, 19, and 14. And we can leverage the use of different sequencing methods uh, to understand the genomic identity changes of the cells as they're undergoing these differentiation procedures. So what you can see on the right side is a PCA of um, bulk sequencing of our cells throughout the epithelial stem cell differentiation process. On the far right, we have our induced pluripotent stem cells that are mapped in. As the cells differentiate for that first eight days, you can see their change in genomic identity. And then as they are successfully passaged, they kind of sweep around in this lovely arc that's getting closer to our control or reference cells. They're not quite there yet. And this is where a lot of our research is being focused is ensuring that we're closing the identity gap between our IPS derived cells and our reference cells so that we have the best performance possible for our product. <laughs> 